Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I'm glad to have you here and I hope you will consider subscribing. So today I have another meal in a jar uh, canning video for you. You guys are crazy about meals in a jar. I don't know what it is about them, but you love them. And so today I thought I would bring you another one. I had a subscriber contact me and um, ask me about a recipe that they had found online and asked if it could be converted to a canning recipe. And as I was reading through the uh, recipe, I'm like, that sounds really good and it sounds like it would make a fantastic meal in a jar. So this is kind of by request and um, I'm sure that you will love having it on your shelf. Today we're gonna to be making beef and bean stew. So as I looked at the recipe, I went back and forth with how, what guidelines I wanted to use for um, canning it up. Uh, I could have gone several different ways. Usually when I find a recipe that I want to can up that is not a quote unquote tested recipe but has all of its ingredients are safe for canning, I try to find another recipe that is similar that I can use as a guideline. Um, and that's what I did with this in this case. Now you could totally, with any super stew, you could totally use the National Center of Home Food Preservation's um, method for canning up your own super stew, and I will leave a link to that in the description box. Um, that is a fantastic way to um, jar up your own recipes, and um, the, it would have been perfectly suited to do here. However, I decided to go a little bit different route, and I'm gonna be using the Beef Chipotle Chili Guidelines from the All New Ball Book. Um, I do have a video on the Beef Chipotle Chili, and I like the method that they used to make that dish from the All New Ball Book. The ingredients in the Beef and Bean Chili are very similar to the Beef and Bean Stew, but the method that they use is a little bit different than what the National Center of Home Food Preservation's Canning Your Own Soup calls for, and I like this method a little bit better, so that's why I went this route. Now, the other thing that I found in researching this recipe is there are different versions of it, of course. Um, if you look on Pinterest or if you Google it, there are different versions of it. So this, the core part of this recipe is fantastic in that you can change it up flavor-wise by changing the type of beans that you use and the spices that you use. You could make it Italian, you could give it a little bit of a Mexican or Latin flair, a flavor in the background if that's what you wanted to do. I'm gonna keep mine pretty basic. The recipe that was forwarded to me is pretty basic in its, um, as far as the ingredients and the seasonings, so I'm gonna stay pretty true to that. So just know you can use any dried bean you like and any dried spices you like to change it up any way that your heart desires. So the ingredients that we're gonna be using for my version of the beef and bean stew, which is very close to the original recipe that was sent to me. I used one pound of dried pinto beans that I did a quick soak on, then I um, drained them, put on fresh water and two bay leaves and I par cooked them for 30 minutes just at a low simmer just to get them to start to soften up which is part of the instructions in the beef and bean chip the beef chipotle chili. Then I used one and a half pounds of stew meat and this was the part that I like about the recipe from Ball. They allow you to brown your meat in a little bit of oil. We know that we're cautioned about not adding extra fat um, in canning recipes, but this re this recipe does allow for it, and that's why I liked it. So I browned up my one and a half pounds of stew meat in about one tablespoon of olive oil, and then we need one cup of chopped onion, one cup of sliced carrots, that's about one really large carrot, we need six cups of beef stock, I use the better than bullion um, beef base that I reconstituted, I used one tablespoon of seasoned salt, two teaspoons of dried thyme, two teaspoons of dried parsley, two teaspoons of garlic powder, you can add black pepper, and then of course the two bay leaves that I mentioned earlier that I used when I par cooked my beans. Just know that you can add whatever dried spices, like I said, that your heart desires. So I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. 
As I stated, I already prepped my beans. I did the quick soak method and then I par cooked them with enough water to cover them and two bay leaves to add some to infuse some flavor um, and par cooked them for about 30 minutes until they started to get tender and I've sat them aside. So we are ready to uh, go ahead and brown our meat. I have one tablespoon of oil in the bottom of my pan and to that I'm going to add a pound and a half of stew meat. And we don't want to cook it through, we just want to brown it and get some nice color on it. All right, once you've browned your meat, you want to remove that from your pan. All right, and then to our pan, we are going to add one large chopped onion and the one large carrot cut into slices. And we're going to saute those for a couple of minutes or so. We just want them to start to soften a little bit. All right, once our vegetables uh, are starting to soften a little bit, we're going to add our meat back to our pan along with any of the juices that accumulated. We're going to add our um, par cooked and drained beans. And then we're going to add enough beef stock to cover. I'm using reconstituted better than bullion. You guys know I love that. That was about six cups of beef stock. Then we're going to add some seasonings. My two bay leaves are still in there. I left them in with the um, beans. So now we're going to add about a tablespoon or so of seasoned salt. All of this is to taste. We're gonna add two teaspoons of thyme leaves. We're gonna add about two teaspoons of garlic salt. And then I'm also gonna add about two teaspoons of dried parsley leaves. We're gonna give that a stir and we're gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes. While that's happening, I'm gonna get my canner and my jars ready. Hey guys, we are all set for canning. I simmered my stew for 10 minutes, um, just like the instructions in the recipe I was using said to. So modern canning guidelines state that we do not need to pre-sterilize jars or lids as long as we're processing for more than 10 minutes. We obviously are. Uh, so I just washed my jars and I've been keeping them hot in my pressure canner. I have three inches of near simmering water in the bottom of my All-American canner per the, my canner's instructions. Uh, I've been keeping my jars hot in there. The lids I just washed and set aside. So now we are set to put our delicious stew into our jars. Now, I wanna say because this has beans in it, we're including beans that are not fully cooked, they're gonna continue to absorb liquid um, at, during the canning process and as they sit. So I know from experience in canning beans that anytime I'm using a recipe that has a high volume of beans in it to have more liquid in my jar than just filling my jars to one inch headspace. The instructions do say to just fill your jars with your soup to one inch headspace, but I am going to fill my jars about three quarters full of my solids, basically. And then I'm going to fill the rest of it with liquid. So I'm making sure I get plenty of liquid in my jars, if that makes sense. And that's one of the complaints that I've had or observations I've had with the uh, recipe that we're um, using as a guideline, that chili tends to thicken as it sits and people don't are concerned about that. They are concerned about the safety of it. So um, that's one of the reasons why I'm using extra liquid here because I know those beans are gonna continue to cook and absorb liquid as are during the canning process and as they sit on the shelf. So once you've filled, filled your jars to your one inch headspace, you're gonna use a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife or chopstick to release your air bubbles. And 
And then we're gonna use a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean the rims of our jars. We don't want anything to interfere with getting a good seal. And then we're going to add our lids, center our lids on our jars, and then add our bands to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. All right guys, that gave me seven jars of stew. I'm going to take my leftover um, vinegar, it's a couple of tablespoons left, I put that in my canning water to keep it from, uh, the minerals in the water to keep them from collecting on my jars. So now I'm gonna add the lid to my canner. Uh, for the All-American canner, you line up the arrow with the notch and then, and then you're gonna tighten your thumb screws down two at a time, opposites. We're going to crank our heat up to high. We are going to vent our canner for 10 minutes, meaning we want to see steam coming out of our steam vent. There should be a steady stream of steam coming out of your steam vent for 10 minutes, and then we can add our weight. When we get there, I'll bring you back. Okay, guys, I've been fit venting for 10 minutes. I have a nice steady stream of steam coming out of my steam vent. We're ready to add the weight. I'm going to be processing at 10 PSI, so I'm going to add my weight to the 10 PSI. Make sure you adjust according to your altitude. If you are at a different altitude than I am um, and you need to make adjustments, you're going to be canning at a, at a different PSI than I am. So make sure you know your altitude, make sure you know what PSI you need to be using. If you are using a dial gauge canner, make sure you had your dial checked and it is working appropriately and it is at the appropriate um, PSI before you start your processing time. Once my weight starts to rock, I'm going to start my processing time. I am processing in pints, so I'm going to be processing for 75 minutes. If you're processing in quarts, you're gonna process for 90 minutes. Uh, once your weight starts rocking or you've reached the appropriate um, PSI on your dial gauge canner, Make sure you adjust your heat just to maintain the appropriate PSI or the rocking of your weight. In my last video, I actually showed how your weight should, for the All-American canner anyway, how your weight should rock one to three times a minute. It will rock and then stop and then rock and then stop. Those pauses and rocking should happen one to three times a minute for the All-American canner. Make sure you know how your weight should rock for the canner that you are using. I know the Presto is supposed to have a a weight that rocks at a steady pace throughout the canning process. So make sure you know how your canner should work according to the manufacturer's instructions. Once my weight, like I said, once my weight starts rocking, I'm going to start my processing time, adjust my heat, and process for 75 minutes. When I get there, I'll bring you back. Okay guys, we are all done. I did not have any siphoning it looks like, so I'm really happy about that. That is a common problem that we have in canning, in pressure canning um, especially, and I did not have any it appears, so I'm very happy about that. Um, here's a nice close up of what our stew looks like. Looks absolutely delicious and it tastes really yummy too. So after I processed for the 75 minutes, I uh, turned my heat off, let my canner return to zero pressure, then I removed the weight, waited five minutes, took off my lid, and then let my jar sit an additional 10 minutes in my canner, um, and, and then we took them out. So I hope you guys will give this recipe a try. Like I said, you can make a lot of different versions of it by changing up your beans and the spices, your seasonings. Um, it's a really great recipe to have on hand. And, and Tom, thank you for your inspiration in uh, sending me the recipe and requesting that I explain how we could safely can it up. So I appreciate you all coming along with me today. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day.